going on, everybody? Welcome back today. We're going to be talking about two different things. Number one, this Game Informer article that popped up talking about Marvel Strike Force epitomizes why players are wary of free-to-play games. But at the same time, and this was just mere coincidence, I've got my old alliance leader on, Hamzia. I transferred to his guild after my old alliance leader quit, and I transferred to him. He and I uh, were in a previous alliance, and then Hamzia also quit. And so we're basically having him on today, just talking about why he got tired of Marvel Strike Force, why he quit. And then at the same time, this article popped up. So Hamzia, say hello to all the viewers out there. Hello, McMinions. Yes, yes. We've, uh, it's been a while. You and I have done a couple of chat videos before. You sent me some footage for Diablo Immortals, which I still have not done a video on. Maybe one of these days I will. But, uh, you quit about, what, four months ago? You quit back in November, correct? Yeah, uh, end of October. Yeah, you uh, you quit, and you joked about how I just kind of gave you, like, four months to cool off and to just, like, not be super mad at this game and then bring you on to talk about it. But yeah. But, yeah, I mean, between the horrible state of the game right now with its quality of patches and the crashes and everything, then this article drops... I learned today, I was like, hey, you want to you wanna just like come on and chat about why you quit? Because I think that's going to resonate with a lot of players right now. And uh, yeah, it's just the perfect storm of just, just crap going on in Marvel Strike Force right now. So, Hamzia, tell, uh, you, spent, you spent quite a bit on this game when you were still playing, correct? Yeah, um, close to the end of it, I was around... I don't know. I want to say between five to eight hundred a month, mm -hmm. um, maybe more. It, the The worst thing for me was that I I didn't keep track of it. Yeah. Uh, because it was kind of out of sight, out of mind. Is mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they talk about it in this article about sunk and cost fallacy, right? Yeah. Like that's uh, that's definitely how I played the game. It was just like, no, I'm having fun. I'm I'm, uh, you know, it's it's a fun game. We're good. And, you know, then something kind of just clicked with me and I started looking back at everything and I was like, uh, you know what, I think I just need to drop it and look at other things. And, you know, I, I haven't looked back since, yeah. um, we were talking about this a little off, off video, but, um, I quit around the time that web warrior, uh, rumors were high. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, I was posting things like daily cause I was super ex excited about this team. I was posting all these rumors yeah, and, you you uh, love your Spider Man. Yeah, man, and like I've been playing the game for three years, and finally, like Spider Man's in the meta. Yep. Right, it was nuts. I, like I loved Symbiote Spider Man, but um, he's you know he wasn't Peter Parker, he wasn't Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, but you know, um, so yeah, I was super excited about this team, and uh, I alluded to this earlier as well. Something clicked for me, and that was Eternals coming yeah. out. Yeah. So. We had the arena meta of Black Order, mm -hmm. and Black Order was finally beat out by you know the the Kestrel Silver Surfer Doom hybrid whatever that we had running. Yeah. Um, and I know you have a seven red star Silver Surfer. I do. I do indeed. I had a, I had a seven red star Silver Surfer. It was probably one of the best pulls that I've made, and it was an actual oh, like, random. Oh yeah, pull. that was that was organic. I think that was off an Elite Four or that I yeah. got a seven red Silver Surfer, and that was when I was trying to get red stars on Infinity Watch. I wasn't getting good yes. red stars on Infinity Watch, but I got seven red on Surfer, and I was like, I can't complain because Surfer is just crazy good at the time. Yeah. You know, it's it's so funny you talk about Infinity Watch. I totally didn't even register that they were in Arena Meta. Like just looking back, it didn't they, click for me that they, they were also Arena Meta. Quickly. Yeah, it just I remember the the reign of Black Order and how fun it was to be able to beat that team. Yeah. And then Infinity Watch made it extremely frustrating. Um, oh, I I hated every second of the Infinity Watch meta. Yeah, but I was really excited about Silver Surfer mm -hmm. and getting a seven red Silver Surfer. Um, I remember you and I did the math on like, okay, this is how they're doing these offers. If we want to max these characters yep. out, we need to do it this way. Yeah. Right. And I was on it with you. Yeah. And you and I, you and I were, out. you and I were on the, were like holding hands, buying these silver surfer offers. Yeah. It was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh man. Good times. You know, whatever. <laughs> um, and Eternals comes out and I had to move silver surfer off my arena team. Mm-hmm. 
And that is what kind of did it for me. I was like, I haven't had this character for a long time. I've heavily invested. And, you know, I, he was sitting on war defense for me. He was, uh, like, it, he was virtually useless. Yeah. Right? He wasn't in my cosmic team because uh, for raids, cosmic, no, mystic, mystic. He was, I think, only in my mystic team. Yep. Maybe. And maybe even got swapped out at the end there. He, uh, um, once Eternals came in, he lost a spot in the Mystic team for me. Yeah. Because you're using yeah, exactly. New Warriors, so. Yeah. Yeah, New Warriors yeah, plus so Eternals, all... that's your go-to Mystic team. Yeah, exactly. Cloak and Dagger and Eternals, and then you throw in, uh, I don't even remember who the fifth was, but. Adam Warlock, I know some people did Adam Warlock. Like, Thanos was a good option sometimes for Mystic. But, yeah. yeah, the Eternals kind of shook things up. I honestly, like, I don't mind the Eternals meta too much because there's a lot of, like, rock, paper, scissors going on with that. Mm -hmm. Infinity Watch was just a pain because it was mirror match after mirror match. Yep. And with Black Order, you had you had options. Like, with Black Order, you could bring in, like, Symbiotes and uh, Doc Ock and punch up, like, that 100k. That was the fun one. That was a, that was that a, was fun, a fun counter. One. But yeah. yeah, like it was one of those frustrating things where like if any watch kind of turned me off to arena for a while because I just did not care for these five minute mirror matches. But yeah, and it was it was just a pain mm -hmm. to deal with. Right. Yeah. But yeah. The tipping point for me was replacing Silver Surfer. And mm -hmm. then I kind of looked back and I was like, OK, well, how much did I get what I feel I was owed for how much I spent on this character? Yeah. And the answer to me was no, mm -hmm. right? Like if I had spent that same amount on Black Order, I would have been very happy. Right. Um, but Black Order, I missed Maw the first time. By the time I got Maw the second time, they were still in the meta, but they were relatively easily defeated. Uh, you know, I still got my number one arena. I was still top 10, top 15, but, you know, it was a lot of hard work. Right. Um, and then, you know, we went and did the same thing for Infinity Watch and it didn't end up being the same as black order uh yep. i don't know if it was just because there was more spenders at the top end now or or what you know merging arena shards um whatever but just the game it was starting to become more less and less fun yeah in all aspects yep right and that and that was to me it was like okay um seven red star silver surfer on the bench yeah. um and and you know one of our one of our alliance mates asked me he's like hey what made you quit and i was like you know what it wasn't even the fact that it was 50 to 70 for a new character to make them viable no character skippable which kind of was an issue a little bit but like i mean you're playing the game you want to be really good at all aspects of the game you're going to do that mm -hmm. right um but it was the fact that you know dd5 comes out teal gear comes out they tied Teal Gear to Alliance Progression, and suddenly me as an Alliance leader, I'm pulling my hair out, trying to recruit people. Me and actually the act like I was one of the captains, um, and I worked really closely with Wasta, our Alliance leader. Yeah. And we were both just like we were so done. He quit a few weeks after I did. Yeah. Um, and just I'm I'm really happy to see the Alliance didn't fall apart. They're still going strong. Yeah, we're I, still I doing great. You guys are doing 2.100 percent right now, which is awesome we're pushing 100 percent um, on 2.1 so we'll get there soon but yeah i mean it's it's slow work but we're we're getting there in progression yeah but i mean the reality is if somebody like you or myself or anybody else in that alliance decided you know what i spend enough money i want to be at the cutting edge mm -hmm. and this alliance isn't doing it for me well guess what now we need to replace that person and yep. 23 other people are are being let down yeah and that's that was a, a huge issue for me and i know a lot of people talked about it about tying dd5 to alliance progression and how you need to rely yeah. on 23 other people to get you to where you want to go uh and some people are gonna feel like they're the burden and other people are gonna feel like everybody else is the burden and they're carrying everybody and as the alliance captain alliance leadership i personally i couldn't handle dealing with that anymore Right? I couldn't tell the better guys, hey, you need to carry some of the weaker guys. And I couldn't tell these weaker guys, hey, you're holding everybody back. You need to pick it up. Yeah. Because what are they going to do other than spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars to catch up? Yeah. There's nothing they could do. 
Man, I should have had you on sooner. You're just having like a big old venting session on this. I mean, I yeah, can't man. blame you. Like, like <laughs> it was, it, it was, it's basically designed to be an alliance breaker. Is the whole tying the teal gear to your alliance progression, and then, like, also gain it behind. Well, the two point one blue ISO. It's crazy now looking at that. Like the two point, the blue ISO is not as big an issue as it was like the teal gear being tied to alliance rates. They're both big yeah. issues, and I remember when the blue ISO requirements came out. People were furious about that. Like, oh yeah, they. I, I still say like that was one of the dumbest things they could have done. They uh, they did it before they it's announced more availability for green ISO. Like the yeah. the their whole process for that was just backwards. Was bas was yeah just completely ass backwards on what they did for it. But yeah, I, it's it is a little frustrating, you know, having to rely on twenty three other members to make sure I can get my teal gear progression right and i hate it um i'm sure there's plenty of other people who don't like it either but uh was there anything else you wanted to bring in or anything else you want to talk about in terms of what um like what else like kind of drove you away from quitting or drove well, you away from the game my key thing mm -hmm. when people asked like in the moment when people asked it was as a player i felt disrespected by the devs or whoever is making decisions about the game. Yeah, you um, and you and pretty much everybody else right about now. Yeah, and like the the thing is, I mean, man, we're four months, we're we're a quarter past me quitting, right? Yeah, and these are still problems. It's all still the same complaints. They didn't like. I'm sure there was a little bit more of an exodus just other than me, right? But these have been complaints that have been in the game for months and months and months. And they haven't done anything about it. Yeah. The game is not in a better state. The game is maybe in the same state or arguably a worse worse state. I don't play anymore, so I can't really say. But like it's not it's not a game that is gonna last very long if they keep doing this, right? Because mm -hmm. people are gonna find other other hobbies, they're gonna find other places to spend their money, whether it's a, another Marvel IP or something else. Yeah, it's right, definitely it's not going to be a future revolution, though. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, like, something something's going to give. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, Blizzard said, I mean, Blizzard said they're they're looking at getting into mobile with a Warcraft IP. Maybe that does it, right? They were one of the biggest MMOs in the world I, for a long time. I right? will say, if Blizzard does something akin to, like, Marvel Strike Force or Star Wars Galaxy Heroes with, like, you like collect heroes and everything from their from their different uh blizzard ips from their lore yeah i would totally be in like you like have like your warcraft you have your starcraft you have your um uh i'm totally diablo. forgetting diablo yeah overwatch yeah like if you Lost start Mike bringing games. them all in to like a like a hero collector game like this i i said it before years ago when i was playing galaxy heroes i was like that's probably gonna be where i migrate if that happens because i love the blizzard games not so much the company right now we'll see how this microsoft hey, ac acquisition turns <laughs> out but yeah. um yeah i mean maybe they turn around things in time but yeah that's there's there's other options out there we've also got new games like lost ark has just released i think worldwide we'll see if people migrate to that but we're, uh, we do need to talk a little bit more about this article too because like, this, uh, when you were reading this, like, when I was reading it, and you and I were talking, I was like, I have a feeling this is gonna really resonate with a lot of your issues. In terms oh, yeah. of, like, the, the, one of the first things he mentions up here, the second, uh, second paragraph in, is that the microtransactions feel a lot less micro these days, with a lot of, like, 50 to to $100 offers now. And you're talking about how, like, you used to buy characters at, like, $60, but now it's a lot more for those characters. Well, yeah, you need to also look at, okay, um, this character, I'm either going to, I know this character's coming out, so I'm going to start pooling my gold and my resources mm -hmm. and make sure that this character's ready to go. Because unless you get them to the top gear where the rest of your roster is, they're not going to make an impact. Yeah. Um, and if you're spending money or buying a character and you can't make them make an impact on your roster, what's the point? Yep. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, why are uh... you doing it? Like, the whole power creep thing. Like, we have the before and after Silver Surfer. And, yeah. like, 
you can see like it's crazy now how Silver, Sur Silver Surfer is being power crept. Like for crying out loud, Ravager Stitcher has more health than Silver Surfer. Did you know that? That's insane. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I love my Ravager Stitcher. Like, I did a video where he just one shots Doom and Alliance War. And I was like, I was like, this is like perfect, like meme territory. But at the same time, when you have a Stitcher minion who's got more power and better stats on him at a five red, seven yellow than a seven red, seven yellow Silver Surfer. Yeah, there's there's some issues here, especially so, since some Surfer's missing only like zeros a year old. Or, yeah, What's that? exactly. There's some missing zeros or added zeros <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. You know, decimal point Jeff, they gave him the kits rather than the offers and just let him go. Yeah. Yeah. It's this constant power creep and how like we're constantly having to buy these new characters. And Scopely has this new policy of like, we're not going to make any team skip really skippable anymore. So like every team that comes out now, you have to invest in because if you don't, you're going to be behind on some kind of legendary event in the future or like web warriors. Like they're miles ahead of symbiotes in terms of the rates. You got to invest in them now, especially if you're progressing for the doom raid. So mm -hmm. now your symbiotes, which you probably dumped lots of resources into is now got put to the wayside for the most part. Still use them in war, but that's about it. Um, Man, symbiotes were my, um, my trash team in war. I couldn't kill anything <laughs> with them because they're so big. Yeah. Like, what? Like, 900k symbiotes? What am I going to do with that? I, <laughs> I would literally throw them at a 400k awk. I mean, you could throw them at Asgard. He, he, see, Asgardians are Who long Who was running Asgardians? Yeah, no one's running Asgardians right? anymore. Um, And realistically, whatever team I threw them at, the, the 600k um, Axemen would do it better. Yeah, I mean the one the one team that I still use them for is your Secret Avengers with like Nick Fury, because there's a lot yeah. of minions on that team and that really drives their speed bar. So that was like the one place I still really get a use for symbiotes. But like you just mentioned, Astonishing X Men does it quite a bit better than symbiotes. Yeah, it's just symbiotes were one of my last teams that I used um, when we would be doing a full clear. They'd be my last attack. Mm -hmm. Um when we would do toes and stuff like just just to end it oh yes good old toes uh, and, I'd, and i'd throw them at whoever because it didn't really matter i just needed a win at that point mm -hmm. all right um and i mean the reality was i mean they they kind of fixed it a little bit by adding in the extra teams but we were overcrowded on characters and teams and not enough places to use them mm -hmm. um and it seems like that you know they're still doing that. I I made a joke to this alliance mate um, when I was telling him everything. I was like, "Well, these older characters that they keep bringing in, bringing back into the meta is kind of good for the game." Yeah. But you can't skip them. And I made this joke, and I can't believe it it came true. I said, "Ravagers might be the key to the next war defense team." They there you go, and. Uh... I they're, mean, they're the key to Heroes for Hire, right? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. That's Weapon X. Um, Ravagers are not another Weapon X, but they are still a very good war offense team. And uh, I even used several of them in the tech raids, the tech nodes for the Doom raid. Yeah, so they're overly useful. <laughs> and for a lot of people, I mean, I had everybody at 1060, 6664, but a lot of people didn't. Um, so, I mean, me upgrading them to like g12 wouldn't have been that bad right uh but yeah it was like where are you gonna spend your resources on these 200 plus characters that you have um you're obviously do you want to spend them on the ones that you like yeah like spider-man and wolverine and these characters that brought you actually to the game or are you gonna spend them on some no names like ravager stitcher and ravager boomer and Mary Poppins. Young, I mean, I, right? come like, on, come on now. Like, don't don't diss Ravager Stitcher. He's uh, he's I mean, a, I, he's a god tier character now. He's literally a no name, man. I know. He doesn't have a name. Like, I don't know. I know you don't. Have you seen my video of him one shotting Doom? I have not. Okay. Um, I I saw the clip that you sent me or the <laughs> screenshot, but um, of I him doing read, like seven hundred k damage to Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to reteach my YouTube algorithm to stop showing me MSF stuff. So I had to stop. I, you're the only one I'm still subscribed to, but I had to stop clicking on your videos. 
or else it keeps suggesting MSF stuff to me, and I was just like, I can't deal with this. So. All right, well, I'm gonna tell you <laughs> yeah. that one at least. It's just worth the watch for the first thirty seconds of the video. All right, I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah, well, you 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 should. Um, but yeah, I this this whole article because. I mean, we're, we keep getting off track versus the article, but I mean, the, the money that we once spent is now not as valuable as it is now. Now we have to spend more to get the same as we did before. Like yeah. the, the events no longer being free to play completable. Um, there was a Thanos giving event, which I think you missed out on, but that was, that was no, I did the Thanos giving event. I quit after the Thanos giving event. It was after the Thanos giving that you quit. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that also was like I like it was just way too much time spent in the game for not enough. Yeah, and reward. the fact that they were asking for two grand to finish that event. Yeah, was like, just it was absurd. Just, it was ridiculous. Yeah, and it was all for like glorified basic orbs. Like, can you imagine spending two grand and all you and got was that. like a hundred extra basic orbs? Yeah, like, but you I also got the ultimate furious. shards from Thanos. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, the ultimate food, just what you needed. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, they, they haven't stopped it since then. They still got the the whale, the whale events, like this new one we've got going on with Echo right now. Yeah, you have to spend like about $350 to get all the final milestones on it. And it's going back to this whole, like, monetizing the teal gear and taking their time and just, like, like a just like like a like a just dripping out the teal content bit by bit and yes yeah, yeah you, i know Go do ahead. you remember what you said in your dermamu launch video like the your dermamu tease like whatever oh, video the one where the i end. said i can't the one where video title was like i can't wait to unlock dormammu in a year yeah, and where are you at? We're we're five months after that oh, video. Yeah. Where are you at? I'm I'm yeah, I'm five months after that video and I have six characters at tier sixteen. Yeah, like that's, And a week ago that was insane. two. <laughs> a week ago I had two that's... characters at tier sixteen. It was just finally getting those couple of pieces that needed to take those last few characters up. But I'm yeah. still like months. Like we're talking seven, eight months probably away from getting to DD five completed. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And like, I'm all for the grinds. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, I come from an MMO background. Like, the grind is, I've done it. I'm still doing it. I'm back playing MMOs and I am doing the grind. But the grind feels good because when it ends, you don't look back at all the time that you spent. You look forward at, like, look at what I just accomplished. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with this game that you can never look back or look forward and be like this is what i accomplished and i'm proud of this because yeah. it's not like that this is what my wallet accomplishes what they're giving you right yep. and who cares about that like you could go in in almost any game where there's a grinding aspect you can also just go and buy that grind but you and people may or may not know the difference but you'll know the difference yeah and who like who are you doing this for who are you playing a game for you're playing it to feel spend your time and feel good about how you're spending your time yep right and if you're not feeling good about that why are you doing it yeah and that's i like I, these are the questions i mean it's very philo philosophical but these are the questions i had to ask myself yep. why am i still playing this game when i don't feel good when i unlock something right i don't feel good when i accomplish something because the grind is there but the juice is never worth the squeeze yeah yeah, that's that's always a big question. Like, is it is it really worth it? And yeah, I mean, a lot of people right about now with the state of the game after this 5.10 patch, because I mean, I, you obviously haven't paid attention to it, but like, it's just bug after bug. I have people crashing endlessly, um, freezes, etc., etc. We can't get constant communication, like. It feels like we're having the same problems that we had a year ago with the last, like, what was it, Save MSF last year? Was it Save MSF or was it... Yeah, Save MSF was last year, I believe. Yeah, Fix MSF was the was year the year before, before that. that. And so now we're likely about to have another movement because this patch is piss poor in its quality in terms of bugs and issues. And I remember... 
like two days before the patch dropped, I asked in the Envoy server, I was like, hey, so what's the ETA on the playtest server getting updated? And I was told by Cerebro and Lori, I was that they were like, uh, as long as things are stable on the patch, it'll probably be about a week after the patch drops. And I was like, okay, cool. Here's hoping. And I'm hoping I did not jinx that by, uh, by saying, well, hopefully this patch turns out smoothly because it is going to be weeks before we get that playtest server updated hey. at this point. Because that's, it's, that's it's ridiculous, so buggy. Man. I I still don't understand how this game that is like a multi-million, probably yep. close to a billion now, uh, dollar game, and they do not publicly test their content Here's, before they release it. Yeah, and there's the, that's even brought up in this article is that uh, Scopely reported more than $300 million in revenue in 2020 alone for Marvel Strike Force. 70% growth. 70% growth and 300 70%. million. 70%. Yeah. This like, game has almost doubled in size in 2020 alone. And they break in 300 million. And this is the quality of, uh, of our QA. This is our QA that we have going on in this game right now. Like, at some point, we gotta see a return into the studio to, like, buy more positions, get people in testing. Like, this is a cash cow for Scopely, and it does not feel like it's being treated with the proper respect by Scopely itself. No, they... as The the thing is that they know that they've got the players by the balls, mm -hmm. and they are just squeezing and squeezing, and they're seeing how much they can get out of them. Yeah. And they know it's, it's going to be an endless stream, right? Yep. So they're going to do less and less. They're going to put less and less resources into it and still get the same amount of dollars out of it. Because, I mean, Marvel is still a huge IP. Disney Plus is not going anywhere. They're still releasing new stuff. Echo is probably a very popular character because of what what she was in Hawkeye. Uh, Kate Bishop as well, right? Like, yeah. I, I, It's so funny. You showed me, I think, screenshots, and I was like, that who's, who's the other girl is that like hawkeye hawkeye 2.0 yeah, uh it was kate kate bishop. Bishop. like i had to call her four times right yeah it was kate bishop and echo are the two female characters in this and then we got morbius who was done real dirty by a scopely and then um brother oh, voodoo or... model looks so bad dude okay so the loading screen i've been joking about it behind closed doors the loading screen has like this really nice artistic detail of morbius and then you look at him in game and you're like oh Oh no, um, but uh, yeah, no, they did Morbius dirty by making him like war offense exclusive. I'm hoping I can get some use out of him in DD5. We'll see, but yeah, we'll we'll see how that all goes, how that all uh, how that all pans out. But you mentioned this earlier, like the money and like, and this is a question brought up by Brian in here is like, but when players can you spend money, what incentive does Scopely have to enact change in the game? And they don't. Yeah, they don't have an incentive. Yep, and the reality is that there's nothing that players could really do to push for that. Yeah, and I know it's right? a little like hypocritical this... for me to bring that up, considering I spend money on the game. But I mean, but you—it's a hobby for you. Mm -hmm. You have fun doing it, right? Um, it's just gonna keep like, and and what what are you gonna do if you stop spending money? You're gonna quit, right? Yeah. Like what I did. Yeah, I, I mean, decided, I've walked, you know I've walked away not... from, from games before. I mean, like Galaxy Heroes, I walked away from. Because I just wasn't having fun with it anymore. And I was tired of having to drop so much money on things. And at some point, if this keeps up with Marvel Strike Force, I'll probably do the same thing with Strike Force. Yeah, like I'm not... Um, I was one of those people that decided I'm going to stop spending on this game. Mm -hmm. And that very quickly moved into I need to stop playing this game. Like yeah. within 20 minutes, it's... I went from I need to stop spending to I need to stop playing. Why? Because I realized that the game is not fun if I don't spend. Yeah, there you go. And also, it's and very hard to kick spikes. that. It's very hard to kick that not spending habit if you've already been exactly. doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is uh, it's going to be interesting because I know these boycotts don't work. The boycotts never work. But at some point, like, I, I just don't know, because 
the last time they addressed community feedback, it didn't really address much that we were hoping for. And I have a feeling the next time they address community feedback is going to be even worse. And yeah, there's just no real incentive for them to do it because people are just going to still spend. Like we have we have these boycotts, but they had one of their best months uh, when the boycott happened. So, you know, Scopely already knows the game. They know that boycotts aren't boycotts are like just a threat, like a just uh, all bark and no bite. Like they're not worried about a boycott. Yeah, what are they gonna do? I mean, if they are worried about it, they have another character of a break glass and emergency silver surfer type character. Gambit that and Rogue put out. Gambit and Rogue, man, that's gonna bring back so many people. We remember right? it was uh, uh, it was Cyclops uh, with Fix MSF, wasn't it? Or no, Cyclops yeah. came out before Fix MSF. No, 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 it was Cyclops. It was, okay. it was. I remember because people were buying him and not unlocking him to not reveal to their alliance mates that they had actually. Spent That's money on what the game it was. Yeah. When there was a spending strike, and then as soon as, as soon as people like eased up on that, you had all these Cyclops just pop up. All of a sudden, and... these people had all these seven-star Cyclops, and you're like, "Hang on a second. Yeah, exactly. Like we know what was happening. Yeah. Or they would do it. They would do it in a way that nobody could really see what they were doing, right? Like throw two or three upgrades and then unlock Cyclops and then two or three upgrades, so it just like pushes it up the chat. Nobody sees it, right? Yeah. Um, just like people are doing stuff like that, or they just didn't care because they're like, there's there's no point. I mean, yep. I didn't care. I think Cyclops was one of, the, one of the first characters I bought. Um. Yeah, I came because into the game. I was like, I'm right getting into this game. Time he showed up. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking I'm getting into this game. This is fun. This character looks cool. Um, you know, he's going to bring up my X Men that I haven't built. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just it. That's how I I saw it, and I didn't really pay too much attention to these spending strikes and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I wasn't really that much of part of the community at that point, right? Yeah. And that's the thing is how many people play this game that are not in the community. Yep. Right? Yeah. That they're not watching videos. They're not reading articles. I had a, we have alliance mates. I'm sure we still have alliance mates, or people in your alliance that do not read the blogs. Oh Why? yeah, no, because there's people who don't read the blogs. In, I can tell yeah, who doesn't read the blogs because then they ask questions about, like, oh gosh, it was one a, a couple weeks ago. I can't remember what it was now, but someone was asking about like a certain character that showed up in the blog and they were like hey what's this supposed to be about and it's like i can tell you didn't read the blog because it was explicitly stated i can't remember who yeah. it was now but yes even I, in our alliance probably it's on discord it uh yeah. i think it's I someone could... after you uh Mike, no it could have been someone before you quit it's well who i'm referring to he's he's still there he's a captain um like he obviously he enjoys the game yeah he likes putting his time into the game but he doesn't want to put time into the game outside of the game yeah and he he straight up told me that because i was like dude like you don't you don't care because you're not putting in time and he's like well why should i have to and i was like shit you're right <laughs> like, <laughs> like you do all your blitz rotations you do all you hit all your raids you hit all your wars you do 11 or 12 attacks per war yeah or i guess it's 14 now um so why should I expect that you will also spend one to two hours a day or six or eight hours a week looking at videos and reading articles and, and doing all this stuff to keep up with the game? Yep. Right. And like, it's like, why am I expecting that? Why am I doing? I mean, I know why I'm doing that because I'm a freak when it comes to games. But why am I expecting others to do that? And why is that necessary for you to actually be involved in the game properly? And this goes back to their communication Man. and how this just, I, you know, I could go on and on and you're going to need to cut me off. Cause like, I, I mean, we're up to 35 minutes already, game. but I, I, I'm enjoying <laughs> just listening to you talk about this. And I hope other viewers are enjoying listening to this too, because like this, they're hearing a broken man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, because I think I think you are feeling a lot of what people are feeling right now. And just like, 
why am I continuing? And I am worried that we're going to have another mass exodus because of these issues. And, like, at some point, like, I, I don't know if Scopely can keep it going. Because at some point, the, bre the bad press, like this, like this kind of stuff. Is gonna is gonna make a big enough wave, hopefully. Oh, is maybe this... it does. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, dude, it's on their home page. I don't know if I'm getting it from their. Uh, because oh I my gosh, on the article, it but is it's on their home page. Oh wait, no. Oh, it's yeah. above Horizon. Well, I think these are published. Oh, okay, yeah, these are public. These are time stamped. So this is the latest article to be on Game Informer, but. It's right there on their front page past their Elden Ring uh, cover preview. Yeah. It's right there. So, you know, plenty it, of people are going to see this. It's in mainstream media. Yeah. And this is Game Informer, by the way. This is not a small publication. Game Informer is very big. But, um, but yeah, I, I think I think this final, this final paragraph here, I think really kind of states what a lot of players are feeling in a way, too. Like, because there's always the question, like, well, if you're if you don't like, if you have all these complaints with the game, why do you still play it? And it's like the thing here is he says it. The answer is simple. I still enjoy the core gameplay, roster of characters, and the hero collection slash upgrade loop. However, as the problems as the problems persist and the game design centered on frustrating players until they plop down cash becomes more apparent, my continued dedication becomes more difficult to justify. Now, not unlike a favorite restaurant taking a dive in quality while upping its prices, I have a difficult, somewhat sad choice to make in the near future. If Scopely and developer Boundless Entertainment continue to further alienate their player base in the name of profit, it's inevitable that my ever tenuous time spent in the game will become a more become more of a sunk cost fallacy than an actual love of the game. And I think that that article, that paragraph right there, just just wraps it up nicely, like. Everybody has their limit. And the question is, how much further can Scopely push things before they like push a lot of players to the breaking limits? And we're going to see at some I, point, because I don't think they're going to stop this anytime soon. I got to add something to this. Go for it. I, I don't think Brian spends money in the game. He does. Um, It's mentioned in but here somewhere. He's, he's talking about... The game design centered on frustrating players until they plop down cash. Yeah, it's here. It's here in his second paragraph. It's he says um, he was largely free to play for the first year of the game's life. However, once I did selectively begin spending money, the microtransactions I chose felt rewarding and valuable. Unfortunately, as the so, game's lifespan approaches the start of its fifth year, these transactions feel less micro with offers range from 50 to $100 a pop. So he does spend yeah. money. Yeah, so, but the reality is that you can say, like, this is the same problem for somebody who spends no money in the game versus mm -hmm. somebody who spends a little bit of money in the game versus somebody who spends a lot of money in the game. They all are facing the same frustration on different levels. Yep. Right? Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of crazy. Like, you can't, you can't spend your way out of a lot of these, like, Teal Gear's so, so scarce. You can't even, I like, mean, you, you can crack you it can. out. And get characters yeah. for DD5 in like a month or two, but it's even then, Teal Gear su has such a stranglehold that you get the you get the gear from completing DD5, throw up a couple characters at tier 16, and then you're out of Teal Gear again. You have to spend more. And gold. Let's not even. Oh my gosh. We haven't gold. even talked about gold. Yeah. I mean, we haven't talked about gold. We haven't talked about the leveling. Um, what were they? The the leveling thingies that you needed. Training mats. Tra training materials yeah <laughs> those were you're you're gone for four months and you're already forgetting all the terms bro i like compartmentalized and just forgot about this game <laughs> completely i i, I can't say i blame you in the last four years yeah <laughs> yeah this game this game really beats you down quite a bit oh yeah um yeah it's just like and and just i was looking i was actually on their blogs and i was looking and i was like you know what they have done some good things. Yeah. They introduced msf.dg creators into yep. their team. Mm -hmm. Which I think should have happened two years ago when they Absolutely. first started working on that stuff. Yeah. But, like, I'm really happy for those guys. Um, Ty and, and Pimp, like, they were awesome. Mm -hmm. They were awesome to me when I first started playing the game. And I 
messaged one of them. I, I was asking, hey, what is msf.gg? And Ty, like, went through everything with me. Yeah. To the point where I felt like, you know what? These guys do a lot of work. I'm going to become a Patreon. Yeah. Right? And, and, like, I started spending money for the game outside of the game because of this game. Because yeah. I wanted to support these guys. Right? So I'm happy that they've got their due. I just hope that they that they're not left out in the cold when this game when when boundless or scopely finally decides that they're going to move on from this game and they're not squeezing this lemon anymore and instead of fixing it they just move on yep right and i hope that these guys are because they were awesome and um another creator that left before i did was uh zarathos um like he had done mantis Right? And oh, you know right. Everything. Yes, Mantis. Yeah, he did Mantis. He did Zara Tools. Like, this guy was fantastic. He made my game experience so much easier. Yeah. Um, Because, I like, I'm highly analytical. I like to be able to see everything. And the game doesn't let you do that. So he made a tool that read from the game and allowed him and allowed you to, like, actually get this data to be able to see everything. Yeah. And after he quit, I was like, I kind of felt like the writing was on the wall. I think I stayed around for maybe three, four years or three, four months after that. But like, it's, it's really shitty that these guys that are doing this work for as a hobby are finding that they can't do it anymore because it's just taking too much out of their soul. Yeah. Right. But like, I, you know, it, like it is what it is. Um, if you still have fun with the game, like keep pressuring them, keep, making noise because eventually hopefully they listen right um yeah. talk to your talk to your alliance mates talk to keep in touch with your community members like that's that's how i got through all the dark times that i got through and like that's that's all i can really say is if you're going to keep playing the game just don't you know you're not alone mm -hmm. and if you feel like you're alone just drop it there's so many other things out there like you could spend money on covid's covid's ending hopefully you start going out again <laughs> one of right? these days it will like, one of these days but like <laughs> you don't need to spend 50 dollars on a new character yeah you don't if you feel like the game's not giving you what you want anymore like that's that's kind of how i see it until it's keeping you happy keep doing it right yeah like i can't tell people oh no you need to quit this game it's the worst game ever blah 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 blah, blah. right because no i listened i didn't listen to those people that said that until i actually felt that for myself yeah so and that's the problem with all these boycotts and stuff is people aren't going to stop spending because they still get something out of it yeah all right new character comes out they get something out of unlocking that character a sense of accomplishment whether it's the accomplishment of your wallet or you know the fact that your roster is at the point where you're able to afford through your resources to get a character and upgrade that character and make that character useful right away right until that's still an accomplishment you're gonna keep you're gonna want to keep playing the game right like that's how you're, it goes you're right i am gonna have to cut you off yeah <laughs> I'm you, you could you could literally just keep going on this for a while i know I you could yeah i could write a book but i, I have a, a feeling book. like people if they're still sticking through to the end of this they're like oh my god please wrap it up but yeah, I mean we're up to like forty five minutes now. We gotta we gotta stop at some point. <laughs> but yeah, I mean this is this has been fun. Like it was good getting the cause last time I had to do a video like this, it was based on like a Discord post that I was going through, kind of speaking on my own. But it's much better to have someone on the other end speaking about why why they quit their issues and you know it's nice to have a little bit of a conversation there. But um. I do want to thank you again for coming on and doing this video. Yeah, man. Anytime. Uh, let's let's do some other videos of other games, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not Diablo <laughs> Immortal since you stopped doing that one. I the the beta shut down. So. Oh, did they shut um, down the beta? Yeah, it, it was so funny. Like the week after I quit MSF, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get back into Diablo Immortal, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, the beta shutting down November, like early or late november early december and i was like well that's not fun anymore yeah like i guess i'll just wait for the game to come out yeah so, so i guess i, uh, I guess i'll uh now we're in a drought of diablo immortals beta content 
I'll just go drop my beta impressions video in the middle of uh, and middle of this, just this black hole and see what happens. But you might so, just want to wait for the launch announcement because they still haven't done that. Yeah, and I mean now that they've got now too. they've been acquired by Microsoft. I honestly don't know when that game's gonna come out now because I got oh they still gotta wait for approval from the gov from the uh, FTC to carry through the acquisition. But yeah, I don't know what's going on with that game now that Microsoft's acquiring them. We'll see. Yep. But um, if you guys are still here, 45 minutes in this video, I do appreciate you guys sticking around. And I should have shouted this out earlier. Go check out this article from Brian Shea over on Game Informer. There will be a link down below in the video description. I'll probably pin it in the video comments as well. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys agree or have any thoughts on what Hamzia has said in the in the whole interview here, let me know down below. But as always, if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure that like button, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.